It is the strangest of paradigms, living in a future here in 2024, that we would have absolutely no prayer of explaining to our ancestors stories and things that were so important, dominating the headlines for weeks and months on end, can just disappear. And nobody cares anymore. Nobody asks about it. If I had said, even five or six years ago, that Nicolas Maduro, in 2024, would still be in power, and it was U.S. elections that would be seen as a laughingstock of the world, I would have been called patently insane. But yet, that's where we're at. There are going to be elections next month in July, and Nicolas Maduro is going to win again. Now, some might debate whether they're valid or whether they're honest, but one thing is for sure. Many said this guy wasn't going to last much past 2017 or 2018, and yet here he is. No mass riots in Venezuela, no mass collapse of the economy, no huge junta to overthrow him and reinstall some Washington, D.C. puppet. None of that happened. Washington, D.C. failed, and it's a learning experience. One thing that Nicolas Maduro in Venezuela, for all of his faults, I guess, has never had to do, he has never had to threaten his people with nuclear weapons and F-15s. See, this is something that escapes a lot of people. They get an idea in their mind about who the good guys are and who the bad guys are. And then when information is introduced that contradicts that, they either ignore it, don't pay attention to it, or just hang on to their fallacies. This is called cognitive dissonance. And we talk about this a lot at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. You see, there's only one question Donald Trump needs to ask Joe Biden. Just one. That's it. Everything else is meaningless without this one question. But Battlefield of the Mind, if you'd like to join us at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel, it's only one U.S. dollar per month. Even less if you sign up for an entire year. I'm sure a lot of people are like, yeah, Florida Maquis, you used to talk about Venezuela a lot. And you said the U.S. was going to fail. And the U.S. did. Miserably. Many people, thousands, tens of thousands actually, in the comment section came and said I was crazy, said that I was uh, just some communist plant, that I was trying to be subversive. Well, it started way back in the Obama administration, and he failed. Trump didn't do anything about it. Trump tried to install a puppet named Juan Waido, and that failed. And Biden? Biden has said the same thing about uh, corruption and elections, and nothing was done. Anyway, fully refundable first 90 days. No questions asked at the Florida Mikey Patreon channel. You can sample hundreds of videos going all the way back to 2017 and 18 when we were talking about this story full time. And if it's not for you, 90 days, you can get all of your money back. No questions asked. What is that question? What is that one question? Mr. Trump just needs to look calmly over at Joe Biden and say, Mr. Biden, during discussions of the Second Amendment and gun rights in this country, you made the statement that if anyone in this country had the nerve to take on the federal government, they would need F-15s and nuclear weapons. Sir, are you now stating that you would be willing to use F-15s and nuclear weapons to defend the federal government against the people of this country? You would drop the bombs? You would order the, the planes into the air to attack those people? You see, isn't this exactly, isn't this exactly what the U.S. government told you Nicolas Maduro was going to do or was in the process of doing to maintain power? And they're doing that now. They're threatening to do that now. Meanwhile, giving the go-ahead for autocracy. I've made two or three videos last week or two talking about the complete 
and total collapse of the U.S. military and the full retreat that we are in around the world. U.S. military reassesses, reassesses. West Africa, what a great word that is there. West Africa strategy as troops exit Niger. Now, or Niger, I guess is the proper way of saying that, Niger, K-N-E-E, uh, and then like the singer Cher, Niger, I guess. There's some details here that not a lot of people would uh, like to read while they were eating because it would make them nauseous. Gaborone Botswana, the forced, who's forcing them? The forced U.S. troop withdrawals from bases in Niger and Chad and the potential to shift some troops to other nations in West Africa will be key issues as the top U.S. military officer meets with his counterparts this week at a Chiefs of Defense conference. General C.Q. Brown, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff arrived, arrived in Botswana Monday as the U.S. faces a critical inflection point in Africa. Increasingly, military juntas, criminals, read, military juntas, criminals, that overthrew democratically elected governments in Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger are reassessing their ties to the U.S. and the West and turning instead to mercenaries linked to Russia for security assistance. Speaking to reporters as he traveled to Gaborone, Brown said that as the U.S. pulls its 1,000 troops out of Niger, including from a critical counterterrorism and drone base there, other West African nations want to work with the U.S. and may be open to an expanded American presence. Good luck with that. The conference, he said, will give him a chance to speak with a number of his African counterparts and listen to their objectives and concerns. Wait until you hear about the concerns. Quote, there's other countries in the region where we already have either small presence or have relationship, Brown said. Part of this is looking at how we continue to build on those relationships, which may provide opportunities for us to posture some of the capabilities we had in Niger in some of those locations. Now, here's the problem. Here's the issue. They bury it all the way down at the bottom. Niger's ruling junta, criminals, ordered U.S. forces out of the country in the wake of the last July's ouster of the country's democratically elected president by mutinous soldiers. French forces have also been asked to leave as the junta turned to the Russian mercenary group Wagner for security assistance. Blah, blah, blah. Let's get down here. This is what they do. They bury this because they know a lot of people won't get this far down. Some African nations, here we go, have expressed frustration with the U.S. for forcing issue, pardon me, for forcing issues such as democracy and human rights that many see as hypocrisy given Washington's close ties to some autocratic leaders, Saudi Arabia, <clears throat> excuse me, elsewhere. Meanwhile, Russia offers security assistance without interfering in politics. Now, wasn't the big push for the U.S. having a presence on the world stage, as opposed to just here, is to keep the world safe from democracy. This is a poster from way back World War I, World War II. Save your child from autocracy and poverty. What do you think a military junta is? Make the world safe for democracy. SWAT, military autocracy. That's literally what's going on right now in Africa. Every Liberty Bond you buy helps win the war. Strike two, second Liberty Loan of 1917, helps strike out military autocracy. You see, that is what is going on right now in Africa, and we are retreating from it. See, there was a time, just on principle, we wouldn't have left. If there was a democratically elected government and there was an attempt to overthrow it by a military force of criminals, the U.S. would say, you know what? We can't allow this. We are a force for democracy and freedom around the world. But now that this has happened in Niger and other places, we're just doing what they're asking us to do. Let me reread this. The forced U.S. troop withdrawals from bases in Niger and Chad. See, forced. U.S. didn't want to leave, but the criminal juntas that overthrew those governments said, you're going to. Many people said, or what? See, that's, that's what 
most, um, they don't want Americans asking that question. They don't want Americans asking that question saying, hey, wait a minute. I thought we were a force for good in the world. Moscow, Washington siding with terrorism. Some of you might have seen this. Ukraine just dropped cluster munitions over a beach full of vacationing people. That's the people we're sending billions and billions of dollars to. Tell me how Zelensky isn't an autocrat. But we haven't had any problem for years. For years siding with the Saudis, have we? Or many other autocrats, religious autocrats, in the Middle East. Oh, but let's not, you know, forget this guy who's actually standing for election, again, he's the problem. That's the problem? Really? How many of you have noticed every time Fox News or some right-wing rag has a chance to say, this Venezuelan migrant did this, or this Venezuelan migrant did that, that they will, that they'll com completely uh, leave off where any other migrant came from, if they came from South America. But if it's Venezuelan, boy, they'll jump on that any chance they get. See, the vast majority of them wouldn't know by listening whether it was a Venezuelan or a Peruvian or a Colombian or a Bolivian. They wouldn't know. There are minor differences in the accent, but does it matter is the point. Does it matter? That's the key. That's the reality that we're facing. And those of you who think it's a, uh, a make-believe thing, there's video all over of Biden and his F-15s four different times talking about turning F-15s and nuclear weapons on the people of America if they attempted in any way, shape, or form to retake government and restore proper constitutional government. This might be the single most autocratic statement made by any president ever in the history of our country. Oh, but wait a minute. This guy's the problem. This guy's the problem. It's uh, an amazing psychological operations battlefield of the mind thing to see. How everybody forgets. How everybody just puts it out of their mind. And they don't like to talk about it. Because there's so many other things to talk about, I guess. So ask yourself that question. Would you rather live under somebody who believes that power at the federal level is held in place by F-15s and nuclear weapons and not the will of the American people? Or perhaps wake up and realize we are a lot farther down the road towards the end than many might want to admit. And this was never the problem. This was never the problem. There was never any threat from Venezuela. Never. This was about, was about oil and money and control. That's what dictators do. That's what autocrats do. They can't have anybody around them in their sphere that has any different ideas. This guy had a different idea. Chavez had a different idea about the direction they wanted to go. Reagan knew it. Reagan gave him the F-16. Venezuela was the first non-NATO country to get the F-16. You can look that up. And Reagan gave it to him. Reagan. I guess I'll leave that there. It's terrifying times. Truly, I don't know how um, my parents got and grandparents, God rest their souls, how I would explain this future. The... Uh, ability of something, a story like Venezuela to be number one on the headlines for weeks and months and months and months and months on it. And then everybody just forget about it, have it just disappear and have nobody care. And a lot of people go, well, wait a minute. I don't remember what, wait, battlefield of the mind. Love to have you at the Patreon channel. Only one U S dollar. That's it. One single U S dollar per month pocket change and even less if you sign up for an entire year and fully refundable first 90 days 
God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.